Hey everybody, today we're talking about percentiles and quantiles of continuous random variables. Like maybe you're picking a person at random and measuring their height exactly in centimeters, or seeing how long it takes them to walk a single kilometer. A bit more specifically, the pth percentile of a continuous random variable x is just the value with p percent of the probability below that value. So if big F is the cumulative distribution function, then the pth percentile, call it pi sub p, is the value such that big F of pi sub p is p percent. You can also write this in terms of the integral of the pdf, the density function, the integral from negative infinity to pi sub p of little f of x dx should be p percent, where little f is the probability density function. I always keep this picture in mind here. I've drawn it for normal distribution, but this could be any continuous random variable that, that, um, that you have. If you have the pth percentile pi sub p, then p percent of the area is to the left of that value under that density curve. There's a p percent chance that x is equal than is less than or equal to pi sub p. Now, the terminology is a little bit muddy here, but I don't think that's really a problem. Um, Officially, p represents a percentage between 0 and 100, so it's like an integer or something like an integer. But you'll also see sometimes it's written with decimal equivalents. So instead of 50%, you'll see 0.5. Those decimals are sometimes called quantiles. A lot of times the terms are just used in interchangeably. It's not a whole big deal to deal with. All right, let's see an example. Suppose we have a continuous random variable, x, that has this PDF. We're on the interval from x equals 0 to 2. That's the support of the random variable. And the density function on that support is 1 minus 1 half x. And I'll show you a picture of that in just a second. It's a triangle. We want to compute the 10th percentile. And this just means sort of plugging into that formula and solving an equation that has an integral in it. So we need to find the value pi sub 10, such that the integral for less than that number of the density function is 10%. So instead of integrating from negative infinity to pi sub 10, I can just go from 0, because of course the support doesn't start till 0. And then here I'm taking out the f of x and putting in the equation that it's equal to. And now I'll move through the integration fairly quickly. It's not um, anything that we really need to talk about if you want to slow down on it. You can. So there's the integral, the antiderivative plug in the endpoints, set it up like a quadratic, and get your roots using some sort of technology. In this case, the quadratic has two solutions, as is the usual. You have um, 0.103 and 3.90. But of course, 3.90 isn't in the support of this random variable, um, so that can't be the one we're looking for. It's a spurious solution to this equation. So the 10th percentile for this random variable is 0.103. Here it is visually, which I think, again, really helps. I have drawn the triangle that represents this uh, PDF. You can see the support from 0 to 2. That total shaded area is going to have to be 1 because it's a legitimate probability distribution. And uh, I've labeled what I've said is the 10th percentile, 0.103. And the idea here is that the crosshatched area to the left should represent 10% of the total area under that distribution. A little more terminology, the quartiles of a continuous random variable are the 25th, 50th, and 75th percentiles. The deciles are the 10th, 20th, 30th, 40th, etc. percentiles. So taking that same probability distribution that we've been looking at, here I've labeled each of the deci deciles, um, 10th, 20th, and so on. And uh, the point here is that all of these shaded regions have exactly the same area. Each one has an area of 0 0.10. Finally, the median of a continuous random variable is just the 50th percentile of that random variable. That's also the second quartile and the fifth decile. Now, be careful because the median is different than the mean or expected value. And so just to wrap up, here's a picture of that same distribution where I've labeled both the median and the expected value, the mean. And in this case, you can see that the median is slightly less than the expected value. In this example, the median is 0.586 and the mean is 0.667.